Hey everybody, this is Kai Altira here, and in this video I will be giving you perhaps one of the final updates to my PPQ526 permit to ship ants from over state and international borders. Um, it's been quite a while, it's been eight months, but it finally looks as if I will be getting the permit, and I'm going to be giving you some updates on that. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Alrighty guys, so the first thing that happened uh, about a month, month and a half ago, I actually got inspected by the USDA. So they came to my house, um, they emailed me um, some packets of paper uh, that had information pertaining to the inspection, so the things they would be looking for. Now, mind you, my situation is a bit different because I am not like a facility, I am not like some... Um, it's not like I'm an aquarium or a research facility or a museum or anything like that. I'm not Fernbank. So most of the rules that would apply to them can't and don't apply to me because I'm just a private resident who wants to have ants as a hobby. However, I want to go through the right means of having them so that I'd be able to not only get ants, but potentially down the road, get exotic ants. So because of that, I want to make sure that I set myself up so that Far in the future, I can make sure I am already set up and not have to worry about, oh, now I have to get this permit and wait eight months to a year to get it through. Now, the thing to realize get doing this permit is that they have a lot of applications. Like, they have people from across the United States all trying to get this permit. And there's going to be some patience that needs to be exercised. However, you got to think about it like this. Um... Once you get the permit, you're good. You know, getting to the goal is hard. But once you get the goal, that goal is yours. So it's not like you have to wait another eight months or another year or so to get it again and again. Once you have it, you have it. So, you know, with me, I got a little discouraged and have been getting discouraged in the past thinking about it. But then when you think there are thousands and thousands of applications that these people have to troll through, all these different people that they have to physically go to their house, do inspections, follow up inspections, like it takes a lot of time and effort. So for me, you know, I realize that, yeah, it's been a long time, but they've been working diligently. I've been working diligently to make sure that they're working diligently so that I can get this permit set up. So you know, once I finally got my inspection, I was pretty happy. Um, they had some concerns on some of the things I had. Um, for example, I had landscaping uh, fabric instead of metal um, metal mesh uh, all over my vents. And that's just in case there's an accidental release. The ants wouldn't be able to get through the mesh and then get into the ventilation system and set up shop there or from being in my vents, go wherever they wanted to. Um, I do have an apartment, but you got to realize that if they get through the central vent, the vent that's over, um, you know, in my kitchen, then they could pop up in this room, my other room, the living room. They could even leave and come out the, you know, one of the exhaust vents, and that would pose a significant issue. Um, so that's one of the issues that they had, main issues that they had. Um, another one was in reference to the plugs. So if you look at it, um, you know, your own you know, a plug uh, outlet um, at home. Uh, if you take that back off, they have free range to get into my wall. So they wanted me to get some type of uh, foam or seat, some foam sealant so that I could coat the back of it with it and then, you know, put the outlet cover back on and then be good to go from there so that if there was an accidental release, I wouldn't have to worry about them getting in getting in through the outlet plug, getting into the wall and able to do whatever they wanted to. So those were two of the main concerns that they had. The rest were things that are easily, easily uh, fixed, such as having a sign posted saying, hey, I am the person um, who is able to interact with these ads, have my name on it, contact information, stuff like that. So the main thing to take from it is that I believe that my inspection went by pretty good. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to show what the paper actually talks about. It doesn't have anything sensitive or secret or classified in it. But I don't want to break their regulations um, by showing it. So I'll call them uh, Monday and see if it's okay to make it public. But it's probably not. But I'll see. Um, if nothing else, I'll just try and see if I can look it up online, cross-reference it with the thing, the papers that I have. And if it's allowed, 
then I'll do it, but I'll call them just to make sure. Um, but overall, um, my inspection went pretty well. Uh, they wanted me to give them an overview um, of what I would be doing. So if you look at my previous video where I talked about my glass form and carry them, they wanted the same walkthrough that I went through you guys with. They want me to do the same thing with them. So actually the lady who was one of my inspectors actually wanted me to pretend she was the ant. Talk to me as if I am the ant. What would be going on um, throughout the whole process from me getting shipped into your house to you putting me into the former carrium, which was kind of funny. It was kind of weird now I think about it. But, you know, um, I went through it and she seemed to be satisfied. Um, I'm also going to make some changes for, to my former carrium to make it better. Um, I was thinking about it and I have some improvements I'd like to make. But that will be for a different video. Uh, for now, though, I think at the end of the day, the inspection went by pretty nicely. Um, like I said, small changes, but overall, I call it a success, a definite success. Um, so after the inspection, a few weeks passed, and uh, a few days actually passed, and I went to talk to the USDA, the main one, not the state, not the one that's in the state, but the, you know, the one over in Maryland and contacted them and said, hey, you know, what's going on with my permit? Can you guys give me some information um, if you have any concerns? And everything seemed to have been going by well. However, um, there's yet another update on the ants that I will be allowed. Um, unfortunately, um, I have been restricted again uh, to only have about three types of ants. They'll be Laceus flavus, Laceus niger, and Formica fusca. Um, the Herculanus ant I won't be able to get, even though it is found in America. I don't know the problem with that. Um, but unfortunately or fortunately, it's bittersweet. Uh, so I can get the ants. Not right now because my permit hasn't been uh, finally approved. It has to go to the state agency. They have about two or three weeks to make... Um, uh, make any type of input and then at that point it'll go back and then you know get kicked back to Maryland and then they'll finish it up however they want to and then be like boom you're good or boom you're not good um, if everything gets approved then I believe the state agency has to come back again so the USDA will be back again to my house do a final inspection and then call it good and then from there I will have the ability to order my aunts Finally, after all this time, because it's been getting very annoying. Very, very annoying. But um, it all comes with due time, so you need a lot of patience when you're dealing with the government uh, because the government likes to take its time. And when you look at the welfare of the you know habitats around the U.S., considering what happened with the fire ants, you know, the, um, I can definitely understand and sympathize with the fact that they are taking their due diligence. So it's not a knock against the USDA at all. It's just saying these guys are trying to do their job. They're trying to safeguard the natural environment and ensure that I don't import something that gets accidentally released and then now we have another fire ant scale situation on our hands. Because no one wants that. Because fire ants suck. They really suck. So they're trying to do their best to make sure that we don't have any other ant species exploding across the continental U.S. and making life suck for a lot of people. But speaking of fire ants, I actually asked them if I could get some fire ants as well shipped over and they said, strangely, no. And it confused me because I'm like, these are fire ants. They're found in the United States. Um, but what their reasoning was is that these fire ants, they... Um, explode they don't literally explode but they uh they grow in very large numbers within a short amount of time and they don't want it to be where i get overwhelmed by having so many ants that you know are just there and then there's a higher chance that there'll be an accidental release or i make it frustrated um it it sets a bad a bad situation up because they explode, they have a lot of numbers, and they can have multiple queens. And if the population gets too high, it'd be a problem. But they don't know that, you know, I could do population control if required, but they weren't aware of that. I didn't make it aware, make them aware of it. So as of right now, I'm just gonna wait and see what happens in the future. Um, 
as of right now, I'm just going to deal with the fact that they've restricted me to the beginner ant species, uh, Laceus flavi flavus and Laceus niger. Um, but later on, I'm going to ask for more ants. Um, and trust me, I'm not trying to go about and get like every exotic species that there is. No, 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 no. What I'm trying to do, what my intention is with asking for, you know, different ants is to get some expertise in them because you know I can look at YouTube and get information on these different ants you know but I want to be able to experience it myself on how to keep them so for right now I'm I'm perfectly okay with getting the Laces Flavus and the Niger ants and the form of that's okay but later down the road when I get more experience I would like to keep other ants as well more than just the domesticated the not domesticated the domestic ants that I have I want more exotic species so that I understand oh well if you're going to have like Flodilla nota if that's how you actually pronounce their name this is how to take care of them or if you're going to have you know one ant or another you know this is how you take care of it I just want the knowledge and the experience of dealing with these ants and that's why so it's not that I want to sit here and get every ant known to man just for the hell of it. No, that's not the intention. It's to learn. It's for me to learn and give to you guys out here in the YouTube and the internet sphere. And for my own delight, honestly. Um, and that's really how it is. And, you know, I've been getting, speaking of that, I've been getting comments from other people asking, you know, why don't I just make, why don't I just go get my own ants out there? Well, the problem with that is that um, there aren't a lot of ants where I live. Um, well, there are a lot of ants, but the place to really get them from, it's pretty far. Um, at the very least, it's like a, it's a 15, 20, it's a 20 minute drive, which is fine because it's in a more wooded area. Um, the issue with that is before I went to going to the USDA to get a permit, I actually went every single day in the summer waiting for almost every single day because I still have work trying to get trying to catch the nuptial flights and I got nothing um, and eventually I just kind of gave up on it because it was too much every day as soon as I get off work switch into my outdoors outfit head out of there head out uh, driving 15 20 minutes and then look for some nuptial flights and they tend to happen in the morning but I have to go to work in the morning um, there have been plenty of times where I've, I've tried to do it, but it's just, I can't. And the place where I go, um, the wilderness area, it's owned by someone. So there are only certain times I can even go there because they are only open certain times, which creates a problem because I, A, I have work and B is I, you just get tired of constantly going out there and looking and looking. So eventually I just said, I'll just go to, through the USDA. And yes, it has been eight, nine months since I put in the permit, but at least once the permit is solidified, hopefully it's approved, I can go to the company and say, hey, you can ship me my ants, here's my permit. They could say, all right, Kite, here's your ants. I get my ants, and then it's like, boom, we're good to go now. So that's the whole point of it. And then I can go ahead and put them in my formicarium, which will be improved, which I'll show you guys in a different video, but then I have them and that's it. And I don't have to keep going outside. Go, keep not even going outside. I don't have to keep going out, coming back, going out, coming back, going out, coming back, because I get super annoying. So that's that. So then the next question becomes, let's say down the road, they denied me. Well, they denied me now for getting these tropical species. The next question would be, how do I get the tropical species and how am I able to contain them? And it's more than just tropical species, it's just, how do I deal with ants that are used to a climate that is not present where I live? How do I replicate it and how do I keep them living in these conditions? Um, because down the road I would like to keep ants that are from different climates um, than what I'm in. So I would like ones that are more in a desert climate or a tropical environment. And the whole point of that, like I stated before, is to just ensure that I gain that knowledge and just to be able to know I know how to do it, teach you guys on how to do it. But with doing all of that, it requires a lot of work. And I can't create the humidity. I can't create the temperature variances that exist in these other places because it doesn't exist naturally. But I can do it artificially. Now the question becomes, 
how do I do it artificially? And that would be by using this microcontroller. Um, this is an Eligu microcontroller. Uh, it's basically a little small computer. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Arduino, uh, then you will definitely know what I'm talking about. Um, I, my intention is to use this and variances of it uh, to be able to create an artificial climate within the formicariums that I use, be it the wooden one that I showed you in videos way back, or be it um, with using the glass formicarium that I showed you guys in a more previous, not so far ago, so long ago video. Uh, so how it would work is I would hook these up to most likely a relay. Um, hook these up to a relay that is connected to the out commercial outlet or domestic residential outlet, what have you. And then uh, by using code that I upload to the microcontroller, it will do what I want it to do. So I have to use more components. It's not just the Eligu that I'm using and then a relay. I have to I have to connect all these different components that are going to be able to tell me the temperature, that are going to be able to give me the temperature, the humidity, and constantly update that. I need a heat source. I need a water source. And then by using that, the heat source, the water source, and fan, I'll be able to adjust the temperature to make it either more tropical by adding more heat, less ventilation, more water, or a desert environment where it's more heat, less uh, ventilation, and less water, and just mix it up between there. Um, I'm sure that there are going to be more variables I need to consider later on as I continue forth with this project, but at the present time, that's all that I really see I need, the main focuses that I need to have. Um, but as I go into it more and refine it more, more things will be discovered, more experiments need to be run. So I'm not going to say, like, those are the three things I'm slapping together and then calling it good. I'm going to take you guys on the video series with me as I begin to learn more about the Eligu and this situation and show you another video exactly what I'm planning to do. So that is the video. That is the update. Um, like I said, it's been a long time, but it's all good because doing this project does more than show me what I need to do. It shows you guys what you can do in order to ensure that you guys can get this permit probably quicker than me because this, I am the first person from what they say, I am the first person to put in for this permit as a private residence. So if I can talk to you guys and help get you guys on your way to putting in a permit, they'll be able, their higher ups will better be able to gauge what requirements need to be applied for private residences who want to get these ants out of hobby as opposed to, you know, science museums like Fern Bank or some type of natural museum in general. So I am the guinea pig. I am the sacrificial lamb in, the, in this entire situation. So don't get discouraged. I don't want you guys looking at these videos and saying, oh my God, Kite, like, it took you so long. Why would I want to do it? Because I'm the guinea pig. You know, in order for there to be change, more people have to push for it. So in my case, I'm the first person to do it. If more people started applying for it, and then the heads up in Maryland, or wherever the actual head is, you know, the people who oversee these permits, once they get more input from all these people from different states, you know, getting this information like, hey, there's a private residence who wants ants. There's a private residence who wants ants here. And Georgia, Florida, Texas, you know, New Mexico, Maine, New York, Louisiana, Montana, Idaho, Kansas, Mississippi. Oh, let me say again, from Mississippi, then, you know, they'll be able to make this process go along a lot quicker. But someone has to start. And I think we should. I don't see why not. So I'll be shooting other videos that talked about the, um, the entire process from my point of view and my impression of it so that you guys, when you apply for it, you already have everything set up. Because my situation was different because there were things that I needed that I was missing that I didn't know I needed. But now that I know, I can help you guys out. So I hope you guys stay tuned. You know, I hope you guys like, share, subscribe, and look forward to the next video that I will be posting in the next few days. So this is Kyle Altair here. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.